Yes, it's seven o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time, Sunday, the last Sunday in COVID September 2020. Let's hope this never comes around again. Uh, we're waiting here in Melbourne, Australia for uh, restrictions to be lifted, ease just a little bit so that we can go outside and breathe. Gosh, getting sick of all of this. But that's why we're here. So welcome. Seven o'clock is Trammelly Fun Pub Quiz Time. So welcome. And uh, what a great time we've had. Last quiz, uh, a few, one person only got bonus points because uh, you will see that uh, in every quiz, there is something that you can pick me up on for a bonus point. Only one person picked it up last time. Uh, who was the first person in the world to run the one minute mile? Run the one minute mile? One mile in one minute? That's, let me do my math. That's almost 60 miles an hour. That's an awfully quick mile. Roger Bannister, in fact, broke the psychological four minute mile. Way back there in, uh, when was it? 1954? 56. Let me see. Anyway. Doesn't matter. He broke it and it was a four minute mile. So, uh, so Simon, you were the only one to pick me up on that. So you get the bonus point. Good on you. So uh, be vigilant because there is something in here that you can pick me up on and get a bonus point. Uh, tonight's quiz, we have one section which is a triple point section. So you might uh, not be going too well, but uh, in uh, the latter part of this quiz, you'll be able to pick up triple points if you're an expert in this category. Today is the 27th of September, right around the world, Distinguished Gentlemen's Ride Day, raising money to help men live longer, supporting prostate cancer research, and what a great day it's been. Local coffee shop, and because uh, we can't ride en masse, no group gatherings here in Melbourne. So uh, if you have had a great uh, Distinguished Gentleman's Ride Day, uh, hope you've had a great time, a safe time, and raised a whole lot of money to help men live longer because I'm interested in that. Prostate cancer, I'm a prostate cancer survivor, and if it hadn't been for a motorcycle accident, never would have found out I had prostate cancer and would have been dead within six months. Wouldn't have been having a quiz time. We good? So is it going to link the other bit together with this one, or...? Yeah, it'll have a blip, but yeah. <coughs> right, that seems to be working. I... One second. All right, technical problems behind us, and we are now rocking and rolling. Yes, Distinguished Gentlemen's Ride Day, and uh, people have been gathering around the world to raise money, uh, ride together to um, raise money for prostate cancer research and uh, help programs, and that's a great thing. Last year, I was invited up to the Sydney Distinguished Gentlemen's Ride Day, started off at Bondi Beach, went to uh, Luna Park across the Sydney Harbour Beach, the Green Bridge, the big coat hanger, and uh, back to uh, Centennial Park for the big entertainment. What a great show of bikes it was there. If you go to uh, my Instagram, you'll see a lot of photographs of that. And, um, and that's the reason why I'm raising money for Movember. So donate, you can go to the link, Bruce Wally link on Facebook, and you'll find the link. Donate the money goes straight through to Movember, not to me. And uh, you can raise money for this uh, very important cause to keep old men like me alive longer. Uh, they support and research into uh, testicular cancer, young man's cancer and mental health. And aren't we going through a stressful time with COVID? So, um, but it brings me to the reason why I'm wearing this jacket. This jacket, distinguished as it is, was the jacket of my grandfather. He got it on his 21st birthday in 1905, 
1905, December 15, 1905, and that makes it 115 years old. And what a great jacket it is. It was a three quarter length jacket for him. It's, uh, it's a bit less than that. It's about a half length jacket for me. Uh, comes down to about my uh, midway between my uh, bum and my knees. And, uh, but what a great subtle leather jacket it is. And I wear it with pride. Um, it uh, really sets me up for the distinguished gentleman's ride. Thanks, Gramps. Uh, great that you got such a wonderful jacket for you. And it also brings us to the mystery item. You will get, if you can guess this mystery item at the end of the quiz, you'll get a bonus point. So here it is. Have a, say hello to my friend here. Gently, gently, my friend. There we go. How distinguished is that? Leather neck. Nice solid helmet. Classic of the uh, 50s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And um, I want you to tell me what these helmets were colloquially known as. What is the name given to these helmets of this period, this style of helmet. What a great, thank you very much for modelling that. And uh, the, uh, the goggles there, it's uh, one of my uh, helmets in my collection. So have a think about that. Remember, uh, when you're playing, you're playing uh, for the glory. There is a huge prize at the end, which is uh, self-satisfaction of having done the very best you can. So uh, don't cheat. Turn off your mobile phones, electronic devices, computers and all that sort of stuff because you're playing with your noggin. So let's make a start to this auspicious quiz. Number six, you're gonna need to uh, have a little bit of maths, a little bit of English and a bit of general knowledge to get through this to gain maximum points. So let's kick it off with question number one. It is collective nouns is the section in question number one. What animals are described with the term Feline. When we talk feline, what animals are we talking about? And I have to tell you, on Friday night, I broke a tooth and every time I talk, I'm lacerating my tongue. So we're going to not, probably not have as much chat as we might. Question number two, as we move right, right along and you and your family and uh, your team there, what animals are we describing when we use the term bovine? Bovine animals. What are we talking about when we use the term bovine? Question number three in collective nouns. What type of animals are we talking about with the term canine? Canine animals. I think that's the name for a robot. Canine animals. Um, question number four. When we use the word lupine, lupine, what type of animals are we talking about? How are you going there? Are you getting a few of these? I hope so. No bonus points in this section unless you pick me up on a fundamental error. So be alert. Question five. What animals are we talking about when we use the term equine? Equine, what type of animals? I've been on one of these on a few occasions in a few different countries. Some are lovely. Some are downright ornery. Question number six, what animals are we talking about with the term ursine? Ursine. How are you going there? Collective nouns. That's the end of that section. And we will be reviewing the answers at the end of the next section. Every two sections, we will review the answers. And you get one point for every correct answer and uh, one point for every bonus answer. If you can pick me up on the one mistake that is in here, 
Um, and some of these have, will give you a bonus. Some of these questions have got bonus points because there's two answers. So this is where you've got to put your thinking caps on. Some of you might have to take your shoes off. I hope you've washed. To, uh, you're going to need all the counting you can get. This is math. Math. Take you right back to school. Question seven in math. What is five to the power of two? What is the answer? Five to the power of two. Oh, used to do that back in school. Gosh, how does that work? Talk to the kids. Okay, question number eight. And you might hate this one because I'm going to ask you, it's sort of like a kitchen question. We're talking about pie. Apple pie, strawberry pie. No, just plain pie. P-Y-E, P-I-E. This is P-I, pie. It's Greek, I think, which is going to be all Greek to some people. Tell me what pie is. Besides delicious. And there is a bonus point here. You can give me two answers. You can give me just one. You might be scratching your head, can't think of any. That's okay. Maybe go to the fridge, get a piece of pie. Question nine. In math. What is the formula for the circumference of a rectangle? A rectangle. How do we calculate the circumference of a rectangle? Give me a formula. This formula, not any formula. Uh, stretching you right back to school days. Okay. Times table. What is 12 times 0? 12 times 0. How are you going there? We don't have, now people don't do mental arithmetic anymore. You know, you go to a cash register, check out in a shop, whatever, you give them change, they've got to put it in the machine. No one can think about it in their head anymore and I've got it all sorted out because we used to have to do math in your head. It was like, that's what you had to do back in 1843. Never had a book or a pen, had a slate and a bit of whatever it was, scratchy stuff to mark the slate. We had to do everything in our head because we didn't have a calculator. In fact, I'll tell you a story. I turned up to my bank when I worked in a bank uh, with a calculator and my manager said to me, young Bruce, if you think that you're going to have a career in banking, you better get rid of that thing because if you can't do it in your head, you are not going to be worth a banker's uh, piece, of, um, piece of toast. Not at all. You are not going to be worth anything. So if uh, you want to get any promotional prospects at all, dump it. So it cost me a week's pay. Uh, might be more. 200 bucks or something like that. Got, got it back to, uh, got a refund and did all the calculations in my head as, as you had to. Apparently, that's how it was. Calculators? No, nah, didn't even have a computer in the bank then. Okay, question 11. We digress. Question 11, let's go back on track. What is the formula for the circumference of a circle? And there is a bonus point here if you can get both the answers. I want the formula. Question 12. How many degrees are there in a university? No, that's not right. How many degrees are there inside a triangle? How many degrees can you squeeze inside one triangle? A lot. Apparently. And the last question in this segment, math, before we review the questions, question 13, who invented the triangle? Well, maybe that's not quite the right question. Who invented the relationship of the right angle triangle? Does that make it easier? What's his name? John Smith? Who? invented the relationship 
of the right angle triangle. Do they still teach this stuff in school these days? I don't know. The triangles, does anyone use triangles? That's two sections. We're going to review the answers. So, get your correction pen out. Question one, what animals are described uh, when we talk about feline? We are talking, yes, Andrew Lloyd Webber, cats. Can't stand them, but there you go. Feline is cats, all sorts, big, small, angry, all over the world. Hope you got uh, the right answer for that. Question two, what animals are we describing with the term bovine? Mm -hmm. Bovine. Cows. Cattle. Um, I'll accept uh, even uh, goats. Oxen. But generally speaking, it's domestically cows. Bovine. Question three, what animals are we talking about with the term co uh, canine? Canine? Dogs. Comes from the Latin, apparently. Dogs. Don't you love dogs? Some of them, fantastic. Real personalities. And uh, aren't there now a lot of dogs out on the streets? People seem to have gone to dogs for company. Uh, during the COVID crisis, I have here in Melbourne anyway, I think the dog population has uh, just jumped right up, just like little dogs do. Question four, when we use the term lupine, what are we talking about? Lupine, wolves. Wolves. Do you get that? It's a tricky one. We don't use that very often. Question five, I hope you get this. What, are, what animals are we talking about with equine? Equine, horses. You can't say horses are my best friends, but I've had some wonderful experiences on them in Australia, Egypt. Any other places? Probably a couple. Anyway, great fun. Across the desert, spare man like Lawrence of Arabia, out to the steppe pyramids and beyond, um, out, of, out of Cairo. And uh, last question in uh, collective nouns, Ursine. What animals are we talking about with the term ursine? Did you have a guess? Bears. You barely made it. You barely got the answer right. You just barely got the answer wrong. Bears. All sorts. Bears. Ursine. Hope you went well there. That's six questions, six marks, six points. Uh, let me know how you're going. If you've got any questions, don't forget to direct message me. And of course, if you're liking the quiz, make sure you subscribe. Part two, question seven in the category math. Question seven, what is five to the power of two? Is it 10? No. To the power of two means five times itself, which is 25. If you got that, go to the top of the class. You haven't forgotten all that stuff. Your parents spent a lot of money on sending you to school to learn. So well done. But we're not finished yet. What is pie? Apple, strawberry, blueberry, all the good stuff. And this is even better. Pie, that little double T symbol. It is, I'll accept either answer. You get a point for one and you get two points if you get both. It's the classic uh, imperial pie, is, which is the most accurate. 22 on 7, 22, two ducks swimming over 7, or 3.14 with repeating decimals to infinity or beyond. So 3.14, if you've got the decimal, if you've got both, you get two points. So uh, I hope you're enjoying your pie. Question nine. We're getting deeper into those ancient formulas from school days that we don't use anymore. What is the formula for the circumference of a rectangle? Was this what, grade six? Ah, there we go. Someone here has got five out of six. Well done. Clap, clap, clap. You've done well. Who's that? Anne's her name. Well done. 
you've uh, pat on the back. I wonder how you're going with uh, the math stuff. Well, it'll be good to have a review of uh, how we're going there. So, so the um, circumference of a rectangle is length, length, length plus length plus width plus width, or 2L plus 2W. How'd you go? No correspondence shall be entered into. Circumference of a rectangle, which is just a fancy square. Square, you take one side, multiply it by four, and you get the circumference. But it technically, the rectangle is the shape and the square is just a fancy, it just happens to have all sides equal. Question 10. Question 10, oh, we're getting right down deep and dirty into math here. 12 times zero. 12 times zero, add a zero, 120, no. No, the answer is zero, nothing. 12 times nothing is nothing. I think it's a Monty Python joke. Come from nothing, go to nothing, what do you end up with? Nothing. Ha! So I hope you got zero, nothing, only get one point, you get zero, nothing, nada, whatever. It's all there. 11, question 11. What is the formula for the circumference of a circle? Now, I know this is taking you and stretching you right to the very limit. So we've got two answers here, two points up for grabs. What did you get? You can either have 2 pi r or pi d. Pi d or 2 pi r. If you've got both, two points, one for either one. How often do we use this stuff? We spend so much time learning this at school to what to do. The computer, you just look at a computer and it does it all for you now. Question 12, how many degrees in a university? No, how many degrees can you squeeze into inside a triangle? How many? 180. You might say, oh, but some triangles got different angles. Apparently it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what sort of triangle it is, whether it's a flat, squishy one or a big, tall one or a big sort of roundish, triangle-ish, fat one, doesn't matter. They're all 180 inside. That's as many as you can fit in to a triangle. It's apparently just how it is. It's science. Can't question science. Last question. Who invented the triangle? Who set the rules up? Who wrote the rules for the right angle triangle? Pythagoras. The formula for the length of the hypotenuse, you know that slopey line on a right angle triangle? Uh, length squared times height squared equals hypotenuse squared. Just add them together. Isn't that funny? So, uh, so Pythagoras, he's the man. And uh, he must have had a nasty dream one night or something fell off and hit him on the head and he came out of bed with that. Wouldn't you be angry? Anyway, that's what he did. So uh, we've got to thank him for the fact that we don't have to use it in day-to-day -day, uh, work anymore because we don't need it, apparently. So, so there we go. How'd you go? Got to lean on the kids for a lot of this stuff. <clears throat> now we're back to English. The next section is collective, collective nouns. Uh, so question 14 is, a what of angels? What is the description of a group of angels? What do you call a group of angels? Most people run and hide when they see a group of angels, so all the reports go. And a lot of people say um, it was an angel, here one minute, gone the next, didn't know any difference, just looked like a normal person. Who it depends who you talk to. Question 15. A what of lions? A what of lions? That sounds like an opportunity to get running or get in the car, wind the windows up very quickly. But if you see a what, what is it when you see a, gr a group of lions? What, what's the collective noun for that? Question 16. What is the name for a group of paper? Is it a group of paper? No, it's not a group of paper. What is it? You got a handful of paper? No, not a handful. I'll tell you that right now. 
So what do you call a whole mess of paper? What's the collective noun for that? Question 17 of eagles and geese. Now we're talking about geese. What do you call a group of geese? I wonder if it works for ganders as well. I have to look that up. There's always so many questions out there that need to be answered. Well, we're going to have a good go with all these quizzes to try and answer a whole lot of questions. And the uh, good thing is, not only you stretch your memory, but maybe you'll learn a few things along the way as well. Be just a little bit wiser. When the kids ask that question, hey, what about that? Oh, well, I just heard about that the other day. It was on Bruce's quiz. 18. What is the collective noun for a whole bunch of racing cars? Racing cars. What do they call them? A big group of them. Question 19. We're talking about a whole lot of crows. Alfred Hitchcock. The birds. But specifically, crows. What do we call a whole group of crows? And what do we call, question 20, what do we call a whole bunch of singers? How are you going there? You reckon you got some of them right? I hope so. Bang your heads together. You can play this as a team. Now, a category we're going to call flora. Bloomin' marvellous. What do you like with your flowers, your gardening? Your green thumb? We'll find out. Question 21. What flower is known as the flower of love? What flower is known as the flower of love? I hope you've received some flowers as an expression of love. Maybe drop a hint. Maybe you're growing some flowers as an expression of love. Have them forever. Question 22. Which is the which flower is the wedding flower of good luck? At a wedding, you want to say good luck? Which flower do you choose? What traditionally? What do they what flower expresses luck in a wedding ceremony? Question twenty three. What do you call a bunch of flowers that's given to someone that you're taking out to a very special event? Like maybe their ball, something like that? What do they call a bunch of flowers? Very special name for a bunch of flowers. Maybe not very big, but a bunch of flowers nonetheless. Question 24. We hit two dozen. What flowers did Wordsworth talk about in his famous poem, Fluttering and Dancing in the Breeze? Fluttering and Dancing in the Breeze, or Hill and Dale. What flowers was Wordsworth talking about in his famous poem? Might take you right back to school days again. I hope it does. Your kids might be saying, what's a poem? I don't know. Do they have them on the internet? Do people look at that stuff anymore? I don't know. I hope so. Some great stuff out there. Wordsworth is one of them. Question 25. Who fell in love with his own reflection and had a flower named after him? What was that person's name? What's the name of that flower? And last question in Flora, uh, before we review the answers. What is the name of the small blue flower of remembrance? There are a couple of three flowers that are used to symbolise remembrance. 
but I am specifically talking about the small blue one internationally recognised. How'd you go? Remembrance. I hope that maybe you need to buy some if you're not doing too well remembering any of these answers. So let us review from question 14. What is a group of angels called? A group of angels is known as a host of angels. A uh, symbol of synthetic logic, a uh, statement of synthetic logic. But that's what a host of angels is. Well, it's only synthetic if they don't exist, is it? Otherwise it'd be empirical. But anyway, that's, uh, we digress. Um, question 15. A group of lions is known as a pride. Not too proud, just a pride. Proud enough. A pride of lions. Question 16. What is a bunch of paper called? A whole mess of paper is known as a ream. Also happens to be the measure of um, 250 sheets of paper, specifically. I think it is. A ream of paper. What is a group of geese called? Geese. A gaggle. That's, uh, what do they call that? An onomatopoeia? Because they do. Or do they honk? Gaggle? Anyway, gaggle. Gaggle of geese. That's what it's called. And question 18. Racing cars. What is a bunch, a mess of racing cars called? It's called, strangely enough, a gaggle. Same as geese. A gaggle of racing cars. What a funny term. Maybe because they honk their horns. Do racing cars have horns to honk? Not sure. They certainly have loud exhausts, which sound in many instances awesome, especially if they're big V8s. Now, here's a tricky one, not used very often, but I sort of like this one a lot. What is a whole mess of crows called? Crows are called a murder of crows. Yeah, fair dinkum. It is. It's true. A murder of crows. So don't get too close. This really sort of epitomises um, Alfred Hitchcock's Birds, all those. What a terrifying movie that was. Great use of camera. And the last one in uh, Collective Nouns, what is a group of singers called? Did you have a guess at this? Choir. See, you could have guessed it if you didn't know. You could have guessed it. A choir of singers. I think that's really nice, because they are a choir of singers. You get a choir together, you get a whole mess of singers. Hope you did well. So, moving on to uh, Flora with question 21. Which flower is known as the flower of love? Who knows the flower of love? No, it's not that song. It's uh, the red rose. Rose, take rose. Don't have to put red, but uh, it's a red rose, the flower of love. So I hope you've received them or you're growing them. I've got a whole lot of white roses growing down the driveway here, which is uh, really nice when they're blooming. Marvellous. Question 22. The wedding flower of good luck. The wedding flower of good luck is the peony. The peony. Beautiful little flower. Lovely. Beautifully coloured. Fantastic. I didn't know that, but anyway, that's, that's how you, you always learn something when you're looking stuff up like this. And question 23, what is a bunch of flowers called when you're looking to give a bunch of flowers to a person, take them out for a special event like a dead ball or something, if anyone goes on those sorts of things anymore? It's called a corsage. A corsage. I went to an all-boys school. Well, we didn't have an end-of-year ball. Didn't have to give one, didn't get one. And question 24, two dozen. What flowers did Wordsworth talk about in his famous poem? Or hill and dale fluttering and dancing in the breeze? The daffodil. And we have Fitzroy Gardens in Melbourne where uh, quite a few years ago, eight years ago, seven years ago, they planted uh, 50,000 uh, bulbs. Now there's only half, uh, uh, over half a million 
and uh, as they late winter, early spring, they come on. It's just fantastic. Half a mile of uh, daffodils down either side of this path, through the park, mass planting, multiplied magnificently, a mass of colour, fantastic. All different styles, all different varieties of uh, daffodils. Beautiful. And question 25. Who fell in love with his own reflection had a flower named after him? Narcissus. Uh, hence the term narciss narcissism and narcissistic, as in only looking after oneself. And uh, because this flower, which is uh, sort of like a John Quill, they say it, it's a John Quill, I thought it was a blue sort of flower, but uh, they talk about it as being like a variety of John Quill, but apparently it grows near water. Um, and that's how this uh, unfortunate flower got to uh, uh, be named after the young fellow who fell in love with his own reflection, Narcissus. Anyone heard that story before? Question 26, last one, uh, section four, last qu answer for, uh, for this page. What is the name of the small blue flower of remembrance? Forget-me-not. That is the name of the flower. Some countries have poppies, others have, um, have uh, rosemary, little blue flower there, but uh, forget-me-not, the blue flower of remembrance, and, uh, and that's the answer we're looking for. So I hope you did really well in that, as we now are two-thirds of the way through, and in the final straight, last page, last two sections in our Sunday night quiz. Or if you're on the west coast of America, it's Saturday, I think. Whatever day it is, enjoy it. So, question 27. In the category of who said this? Now, there's big bonus points up here because you can not only dominate who said it, but who was the actor that said it and what film did they say it in? So there's three points up for grabs for every one of these questions. So let's see how you go here, because you can really make up some ground. Who said, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. The character, the actor, and the movie. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. And <laughs> what an awesome movie. And uh, if you know this family, you might uh, have a clue into the naming of one of our children. But anyway, question 28. Question 28. I'm going to give you an offer you can't refuse. That's the quote. I'm going to give you an offer you can't refuse. That's probably the reason why I'm not an actor. Movie, actor, character. Scratching your head, or do you know it straight up? Some of these you probably know, but you might not know all three of the answers. So, question 29. Here's looking at you, kid. 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 Movie, actor, character. Question 30. Go ahead, make my day. Go ahead, make my day. What a great line. What a great movie. Question 31. Now, this is really a date rather than a quote. But anyway, I'll give it to you. May the 4th be with you. May the 4th be with you. What movie, what character, what was the actor? Question 32. What we've got here is a failure to communicate. 
What we have here is a failure to communicate. Who said that? What movie? What was the actor's name? And the last one, how do they come up with some of these lines? It just, these just become iconic. Question 33, show me the money. Show me the money. Show me the money. The actor, the movie, the character. Two, four, six, seven questions. That's 21 points up for grabs in that section. You can make some huge leaps forward if you're a movie buff. So, last question, last uh, section in uh, physiology. So, I uh, hope you're feeling at one with your body. Question 34. What part of the body is referred to with the term cranial? What part of the body is referred to with the term cranial? And question 35. What part of the body is referred to with the term cardiac? Cardiac. Question 36. What organ in the body is butterfly shaped? Butterfly shaped. What organ in the body is butterfly shaped? It's not very big, but it is butterfly shaped. Have a think about that. Throw that one around the team or the family. Question 37. Where in the body is your patella located? Patella. Isn't that something you, you control the TV with? I don't know. Anyway, give it a go. Question 38. Where in your body would you find the ha hammer, anvil and stirrup? You got a barn out the back? Blacksmithing. Where in your body would you locate the hammer, anvil and stirrup? Question 39. Second last question, penultimate question. Where is your galabella? Glabella. Glabella? Glabella. Now, what I'm going to do here, instead of you writing it down, what I'm going to ask you is point to it, and then I'll be able to see um, whether you've got it right or not. Yes, so just point to it, and I'll give you the points then. Not yet, when we go to the answers. Question 40. Where is your maximus glutamus located? The maximus glutamus. So it's like something Caesar would have. So how'd you go there? That's our last question. Question 40. Uh, we'll go back and review the answers now. So I hope you're doing well. So question 27, the answer to, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Movie is Gone with the Wind. And they're talking about this being removed because it is not politically correct. I just cannot believe it. Just, what a fantastic movie. That's just how it was way back then. You can't go and whitewash, or can you use that word? I don't think you can. Oh, I'm not politically correct anyway. But anyway, you can't just change history because you feel like it, because history is history. What was the character's name? Red Butler. Red Butler. Played by the inimitable Clark Gable. Did you get, how many points did you get for that? Clark Gable, Rhett Butler, gone with the wind. What did he do? He was an arms smuggler. Dear Rhett. Such a lovable scoundrel. Question 28, the answer. 28, the answer to, uh, I'm going to offer you, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse is, of course, uh, The Godfather. 
And uh, Marlon Brando played the part of Jimmy Helms. And what a great role for Marlon Brando. But could you anyone understand what he actually said? Because he mumbled, he might want to move the movie. He couldn't really understand you. Only mumbled, it's very, very difficult to understand anything he said. 1972, The Godfather. And so many um, episodes, so many uh, sequels to that, The Godfather. 29, here's looking at you, kid. Here's looking at you, kid. 1942, the movie was Casablanca. And Rick, Rick Blaine, and of course the actor Humphrey Bogart, the man with the lifty shoes, because he was so short, he needed to get up to somewhere near the height of his uh, uh, ladies in his movies, because he was so short, shorter than most of them. But uh, what a marvellous actor he was. What a great movie, even though it was in black and white. Didn't detract from it at all. Question 30. Question 30. Go ahead, make my day. Go ahead, make my day. Now, some of you might be thinking that the movie is Dirty Harry. But no. The movie is Sudden Impact. 1983, Harry Callahan, and of course, that awesome actor, Rowdy Yates, Clint Eastwood, and uh, movie uh, director, producer now, uh, of such great stuff. Gran Torino. So everything he does just turns to gold. Fantastic guy. Great actor, and uh, especially in this series. And, um, and great movies. Anything he touches. Question 31. May the 4th be with you. 1977. Star Wars. And who said it? It was Obi-Wan Kenobi, Alec Guinness. Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I remember when it came out, I was uh, working in London. Big theatre over there, fantastic. That first scene, that amazing scene when this ship, the ship, you know, once upon a time in a galaxy far, far away, and then that great big ship comes in in the top of the screen. Just awesome effects. Nothing like it ever seen before. Really set you back. Great, great, great new um, era of uh, movies heralded in by Star Wars, that first one. Question 32. Uh, what we got here is a failure to communicate. Cool Hand Luke. 1967 Cool Hand Luke. And the character is Car. C A R R. Car. And that was played by. Uh, Clifton, Clifton James, Clifton James, and what a classic accent he has and used to great effect. Uh, he <laughs> was picked up and used uh, in, with a very similar character uh, because of his accent in uh, one of the James Bond movies. And uh, what a lot of fun that was too when he, uh, he played that uh, character role. And the last one in movies, Show Me the Money. Show me the money. Jerry Maguire. Awesome. Jerry Maguire. Cuba Gooding Jr. was the actor. He played the part of Rod Tidwell, the grumpy uh, rugby player, not rugby, what was it? Uh, gridiron player, football, American football player with attitude. And uh, when he decided to drop the attitude and uh, get a sense of humour, he, uh, he got the money. Help me help you. Great lines. Great lines. And that brings us to our final section. I hope you're doing well. How many points out of 21 did you get in that? Gosh, a lot of points up for grabs. So uh, physiology, question 34 in the final uh, lap. What part of the body is referred to with uh, cranial? Cranial, the head, the noggin. Cranial, using it for trivia tonight. At least I hope you are. And uh, what is referred to in question 35 with the term cardiac? Roses, the ticker. Oh, I punched the microphone then, sorry about that. Heart, the heart cardiac uh, is the heart. And uh, question 36, what organ in the body is butterfly shaped? Not very big, but it's the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland, butterfly shaped. That's the one. Question 37. 
Question 37. Where in the body is your patella located? Your patella is your kneecap. So you've got two of them, or at least most people have. Two patellas. How's your body hunting parts going? Question 38. Where are your hammer, anvil and stirrup located? And you've got a pair of each because you're listening to this and it's in your ear. Yes, it is. In your tiny little bones, in your tiny little bones, in your ear. And uh, question 39, the penultimate question. Where is your glabella? Glabella, I'm going to ask you to point to it so I can see. Yes. Yeah, no, 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 it's not a glabella. This is the glabella, here, right here, between your eyebrows. This little piece of whatever it is, the flat skin uh, with a furrow in it and a few uh, creases uh, between your eyebrows. Glabella. Interesting, isn't it? I don't, why, I don't, why would you need to call that anything? It's just there. Does it need to have a name? It's strange. Maybe someone, maybe that's it. I don't know. So it's very odd. Question 40, the last question, where is your maximus glutamus? You might be sitting down listening to this quiz on your maximus glutamus, your butt. Yes, biggest muscles in the body, maximus glutamus, you're sitting on them, that's where they are, your butt. Well, you've got two, most people have. So uh, I hope you've been thinking with your cranial and not your maximus glutamus, but only your score will tell so uh, send us through the score so we can find out and see if anyone has picked up the, uh, the uh, bonus point error that I have made in this. Um, and now uh, I just want to remind you, of course, that uh, Distinguished Gentleman's Ride is um, today right around the world, continuing on because it's not today yet in some countries. So that's going to be a rolling date, 27th of September. Uh, so donate, like I say, go to my Facebook page, Movember, donate that we might live longer because you, everyone's got a man in their life, a father, a son, a husband, a partner, a workmate, a brother, sibling, cousin, friend, neighbour, and uh, you want them to live a bit longer, donate to a very, very worthy cause. They do great work funding research that no one else would research and fund to have men live longer. Which brings us to Distinguished Gentlemen's Ride Day, and this item, it's a helmet, but what was it colloquially known as back in the day? What is it still known as today? This helmet is known lovingly as the Pudding Basin Helmet. Pudding Basin Helmet. Uh, sometimes it's known as a Cromwell, because that was one of the brand names that came up. But everyone, no matter who made them, it's, made, it's uh, known as a Pudding Basin Helmet because... It's just like mum made the puddings in from days gone by. I hope you got that answer, that bonus question right. So, um, so uh, that's, uh, that's really good. And I ask you, if you like this quiz, invite your friends, share it. There's lots of links going out there. Share it. Subscribe. Uh, we've had uh, so many people playing the quiz and we want a whole lot more. So share the joy. Share the joy. And uh, give us some feedback. Direct message me. Uh, lots of feedback. Thank you very much. Our next quiz will be Thursday, the next Thursday, here in Australia anyway, Thursday. Check uh, what it's going to be uh, as we uh, put the link out uh, the day before, 24 hours before. So I hope you've enjoyed the quiz. I've had a great time. Distinguished Gentleman's Ride, we'll be doing it next year live as a group. And uh, I'll be able to dress up in my grandpa's uh, jacket and get out there on the motorbike and have a lot of fun, raise some money for Distinguished Gentleman's Ride, which uh, fund... Uh, Movember, helping men live longer. So I hope you have had a great evening and uh, that you're going to live longer and uh, have a great weekend. Thanks for tuning in and being part of the quiz. Have a great evening. Catch you next time. Thursday.